اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بار الخلائق اجمعین باعث الانبیاء والمرسلین ثم الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء وسید المرسلین حبیب الہ العالمین المصطفی ابی القاسم محمد اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ محمد و آل محمد و عجل فرجہ و علی آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المنتجبین الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى السلام عليك يا سيدي ويا مولاي يا أبا عبد الله السلام عليك يا ابن رسول الله يا غريب كربلاء رزقنا الله في الدنيا زيارتكم وشفاعتكم في الدنيا والآخرة لا تدعوني لا تدعوني ويك أم البنين تذكريني بليوث العرين كانت بنون لي أدعى بهم واليوم أصبحت ولا من بنين أربعة مثل نسور الربا قد واصلوا الموت بقطع الوتين تنازع الخرصان أشلاءهم فكلهم أمسى صريعا طعين يا ليت شعري أكما أخبره بأن عباسا قطيع اليمين صلوا على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد These were verses that were recited by Lady Umm Al-Banin Salam Allahi alayha after the martyrdom of Al Imam Al Hussein Salam Allahi alayh and her four sons who were martyred also with him in the battle. According to some reports, today the 13th of Jamadi Thani coincides with the death of this great lady. This lady became the wife of Amir al-Mu'mineen salam allahi alayh and the mother of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and his three brothers. Although she was not a ma'asumah, nor was she a mother of one of the imams alayhi salam, yet she achieved such high status and such greatness that she may be among the ordinary people more popular than some of the mothers of the Imams alayhim salam. If you ask some of the individuals about the name, let's say, for example, of the mother of Al-Imam Al-Jawad or Al-Imam Al-Hadi Some people may not know. But when you ask people about Lady Umm Al-Baneen everybody knows, or most people know. And 
she became a great bab of hawaij a gate of hajat one of our ulama belated ulama may allah bless his soul he says a tested tried and tested nether for the fulfillment of hajat and curing the ill in other words if you have a haja desperately that you need it to be fulfilled or someone is sick and you're praying for his recovery or her recovery you can say i make this nether what is the nether he says a tried and tested nether is to forgift a whole recitation of the quran to the ruh of Ummul Banin alayhi salam. So for example, a person would say, Ya Allah, Lillahi nadhrun alay, that I have a nether, I make a nether before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this haja of mine is fulfilled, if this need is fulfilled, or if this sick person is cured, recovers, then I will gift I will host a majlis to gift the thawab of a Qur'an for Lady Ummul Banin. And inshallah, when the haja is fulfilled, then you can invite people. And each one recites one juzu of the Qur'an. That's 30 juzu. That's the whole Qur'an. So in a one-hour majlis, for example, the whole Qur'an is recited and gifted to the thawab of this lady. How did this lady, who is not a ma'asuma, in other words, she's like you and I, achieve such great status? We will discuss, inshallah, four points in learning to sail from Ummul Banin alayhi salam. And sail here is an acronym for four words that we will, inshallah, look at in the life of this lady. And learn from her insha'Allah. Before we talk about sailing and learning to sail from this great lady, a very brief introduction. She was born, according to some historical reports, in the year 5 after Hijra, after the Prophet's migration to Medina, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, five years later she was born. To give you perspective, Imam al-Hasan al-Mujtaba alayhi salam was born in the year 3 after Hijrah. In the year 4 after Hijrah, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam was born. Then in the year 5, Umm al-Banin alayhi salam is born. In the year 6, Zainab alayhi salam was born. So she is in the same age group approximately as Imam al-Hussein and Zainab alayhi salam. She is with about the same age, give or take. This makes her on the time at the Battle of Karbala, around 55, 56 years old, approximately. And she died three years after Karbala, according to some reports, in the year 64 after Hijrah. She was married to Amir al-Mu'mineen, alayhi salam, in the year 24 after Hijrah. So when she was 19 years old, give or take, approximately, she was married to Amir al-Mu'mineen, salamullahi alayhi, and two years later, in the year 26, she had Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, alayhi salam, he was born. She comes from a tribe that was well known for their chivalry, bravery, in Jahiliya and in Islam, before Islam and after Islam. They were known for their bravery. And that tribe was also loyal to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Her father was a devout follower of Amir al-Mu'mineen salamullahi alayhi, as we will see insha'Allah in the course of our discussion. So this is a very brief history of this lady. She was born in the year 5 after Hijrah, died in the year 64 after Hijrah, and was married to Imam Ali in the year 24 after Hijrah. One important aspect 
in this lady achieving what she achieved was the S in sale and that is sincerity, ikhlas. The essence of every action is its sincerity, the niyyah. When you make a niyyah qurbatan ila Allahi ta'ala. We usually say it qurbatan ila Allahi ta'ala. But do we really mean it? Last week I gave a whole discussion about it. When there is ikhlas, sincerity in the action, that action carries. And that work carries. One of the ulama narrates this story, reports this story. He was talking about the importance of building masajid, mosques. And he mentioned about a lady in Kuwait who built 14 masjid in different cities in Iran. She would transfer money and some mu'mineen would build the masjid. When the masjid is completed, they would call her, she would go and see the grand opening of the masjid. Interestingly, when the last masjid was built, she died and never got to make it, to see it. Some years later, a person from Kuwait is going through Iran he stops at one of those masajid and he prays there the imam of the masjid or the caretaker of the masjid the person who looks after the masjid when he sees this man from Kuwait dressed in his you know Kuwaiti attire he comes to him he says where are you from he says I'm from Kuwait he tells him, you know, the lady who built this masjid is also from Kuwait. He said, oh, interesting. Who is she? He says, so and so. This is her name. She died. This man says, I know this lady. I know the family that she comes from. We never knew she built masjid. So he went back to Kuwait. He spoke to the family. He told them, did you guys know that this lady was building masajid in Iran? They said, no, we did not know. So she was building them quietly, privately, secretly. But years after her death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted that action to be shown. Otherwise, you think it was a coincidence this man happens to travel Coincidence that he was wearing his attire. Coincidence he happens to stop at that masjid. Coincidence that the sheikh of the masjid happens to see him or the caretaker of the masjid looks at him. Coincidence that he tells him. Coincidence that he knows the family. How many coincidences? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to bring that action to the surface. To show it. That's when the action is done qurbatan ila Allahi ta'ala. She did not show it, do it so that people say so and so, put my name on this masjid and so on and so forth. That's no. Between her and Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought this action. That's when something is done qurbatan ila Allahi ta'ala, purely for the sake of Allah. This is something we need to practice. Whenever we do something, let us do something truly for the sake of Allah. And I mentioned last time, last week, I said one way to practice this is to try to help mu'mineen without them knowing. Help people without them knowing. Do certain things without telling people. Who donated? Band Khuda. Some mu'min. Who helped? Band Khuda. Some mu'min. Somebody. Who built? Somebody. Khalas. That's it. That's it. This is what we should aim for. This lady had this ikhlas. This, she had this ikhlas. She had this sincerity. Okay. This sincerity made her become the lady she became. The great person she became. So that's one thing we need to train ourselves on doing. Whenever we try to do something, let us try to do it. Qurbatan ila Allah ta'ala. 
How can we practice this? By doing some work and not getting any attention for it or mention for it to the best of our ability. That's one thing we can do. What else did this lady do? Second thing is akhlaq. The A for akhlaq. I mentioned last week, religion is not just about salat and siyam, hajj and zakat, and so on and so forth. It's also about akhlaq. How do we interact with people? This lady, look at her akhlaq with her parents. When we read some of the stories, we kind of get some information. It is said, her father once saw a dream. In the dream, he saw that he was playing with a jewel, a very expensive jewel. A person approaches him on a horse, says, Assalamu alaikum, he says, Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. He says, how much would you sell this jewel for? He says, I don't really know how much the price of it, to be honest with you, to sell it. How much would you buy it for? He said, if I take it from you, if you give it to me, in exchange of honor, in exchange of pride, would you do so? And I guarantee I'll do that for you. He said, okay. And he gave him the jewel. He woke up. He inquired from some people, what is the interpretation of this dream? They told him, if the interpretation is correct, if the dream is correct, it suggests that maybe you're going to have a daughter and this daughter is going to marry somebody who will bring you a lot of pride, a lot of greatness, if that dream is true. Days go by, Imam Ali alayhi salam tells Aqil, his brother, who knew about the lineages of the Arabs. He knew the Arabs. He knew their lineages. He knew he had that kind of knowledge. He tells him, find me a woman who was born from a tribe that is well known in their bravery because I want her to give birth to brave people. Brave children. So he immediately told him, then if you really want that, Fatima, this lady, Umm al whose name was Fatima, bint Hizam, from the tribe of Bani Kal, or Kilab, al kalbiya Fatima, bint Hizam is the lady you're looking for. He said, okay, go and ask her hand for marriage for me. Go to her family. Interestingly here, just as a side note, we believe as followers of Ahlul Bayt that the Imams have the knowledge of everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the knowledge. Why would Imam Ali go and ask Aqil? Find me a, a girl or a, a lady, for example, who knows, who's born to chivalry tribe and so on and so forth. You know, does, does he not know? Of course he does. So then why is he asking Aqil? There are several reasons. One reason, it could be that he's teaching us. He's teaching us when you want to marry somebody, you don't need to go on Instagram and Facebook and social media, talk to this person for, you know, several months, go meet her, talk to her and so on and so forth. And then you say, let me think about it. No, I still don't know this person. Imam Ali alayhi salam is saying, you ask about the family, you ask about the tribe, you go if you want, you can talk to this individual. And that's it, khalas. Okay. And interestingly, if you take a look, in this society that we live in today, in this society that we live in today, most people who get married, they have known each other for years. In fact, they have lived with each other they have, you know, done so many things together. Yet, yet, the divorce rate in this society is still 50%. Which means out of every two couples who get married, one gets divorced. Okay. Interestingly. So if that methodology works, 
meeting the partner, you know, living together, getting to know them. If that really works, why would the divorce rate be 50%? It means that this methodology may not be working. There is something, there's a flaw here in this procedure. Whereas if you go to some of the Islamic communities where they adhere to the Islamic laws, people who follow the Islamic Sharia, in those communities you find the divorce rates much lower. Now I'm not sure of any statistics done, but generally speaking, those statistics would be much lower. Even though they may have had what they call a traditional wedding. The boy may have not seen the girl, the girl may have not seen the boy, but the families meet, the mother of the boy goes to see the girl, for example, she talks to her, she asks about her. If sometimes maybe they meet each other in the presence of the parents, they discuss, they talk, khalas, that's it, they get married and you find that, mashallah, marriage lasting for 50 years. Okay. Here is what Imam Ali is trying to teach us. Ask about a lady, ask about her tribe, ask about who her family and so on and so forth, ask about her, and then khalas, if you've done your homework, tawakkal ala Allah. Of course, this day and age is a bit different. Sitting down, talking to the person is also a good thing. But like I said, it does not have to be the case where, you know, I need to see him, you know, for a month, two months, six months. I need to talk to her. I need to get to know and so on and so forth. Few meetings with the knowledge and the permission of the parents. And then if you find that this individual is the right individual for you, Allah tawakkal ala Allah. Inshallah, there is khair in it. That could be one reason. Of course, there are other reasons, but for the sake of time, this is the one we will discuss. He tells him, go and ask her hand for marriage. So Aqil goes to the tribe, which was just outside of Medina. They were, you know, some distance outside of Medina. They were not from Medina. It was the tradition of the Arabs. Whenever a visitor came, they would keep him for three days, looking after him, treating him well, without asking him, what did you come for? This was their tradition, three days. So Aqil goes to Hizam. He's his guest for three days. After three days, he tells him, what brought you here? What brings you here, Aqil? What did you come for? He said, I have come to ask for marriage of your daughter, Fatima, to my brother, Ali. Salamullahi alayhi. Hizam was, of course, so pleased with this news. He was so happy with this news. He says, look at the akhlaq. He says, Aqil, your brother Ali comes from the house of prophethood, the house of Nubuwa. And he is Qasim al-Nari wal-Jannah. This tells you the aqidah of Huzam, the father, what aqidah he had. He is the one who will distinguish people on the day of judgment between hell and fire. No. So do you think my daughter will be suitable for him? Is she suitable, really? My daughter comes from not the city of Medina. She's not a, an urban girl. No. She's not a city girl. She comes from the rural areas, you know. You think she'll be fit for him? Is she suitable for him? And he is at that caliber. Aqil looks at him and says, my brother knows whom he chooses as a spouse. You know. So if he told me to come and ask her, hand, خلاص, that's what, he knows what he's talking about. So that's it. He said, okay, then let me go and ask her hand in marriage. Now you see, when the father has such aqidah, such sincerity, what do you think the children will be? You see, sometimes the reflection on the children. If we, when the time of salat comes, jump to the salat, then our children automatically will learn that salat is very important and we will need to jump to the salat. They may not do it immediately. You know, it might take them 10 years, 20 years later, but then they will get to it. You know, one of the ulama says, I learned dua al sabah from my father because every morning he would recite dua al sabah and he would hold us next to him as he reads dua al sabah after fajr prayers. And that's how I memorized dua al sabah. Later on, when this man grew, he became a known speaker, mashallah, and a known alim. 
So that has an impact. To lead by example, as they say. Aqil said, let me go ask for her permission. Uh, sorry, Huzam, the father of Ummul Banin, Fatima. He said, okay. He went, he got close to the room, he saw Fatima, Ummul Banin, alayhi salam, talking to her mother. She says, mother, last night I had a strange dream. She said, what did you have as a dream? She said, I dreamt I was in a beautiful garden and I was looking at the moon and the stars and reflecting on the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation. All of the sudden, I saw the moon jump out of the sky into my lap. Following that, three stars came, jumped from the sky onto my lap as well. What do you think the interpretation of this is, mother? Now, this kind of a conversation between daughter and mother tells us about the akhlaq of this lady. Today, how much do we have conversations with our children? Our children having conversations with us. Today, we have that's called social media. It became antisocial in the house. Everybody has their own. You know, you go into the house. The father has his device. The mother has her device. The children, each one with his device or her device. MashaAllah. What are you doing? Oh, I'm on social media. Well, talk. Family. Hello. No. No. This is important. To spend time talking to the children, the children talking to us. It's important. So you, this conversation between the mother and the daughter can tell you the kind of akhlaq this lady had. The mother said to her daughter, if I am right in the interpretation of your dream, it suggests that you'll be married to a great man, to a great person, and you will have th four children of whom the first will be so handsome or beautiful like the moon, and the others will be stars. The father heard this interpretation. He walked immediately into the room and said, Fatima, your dream has come true. The mother said, how so? He said, I have just come from Aqil, the brother of Ali. He's come to ask me for the hand of marriage of Fatima. To whom? To his brother Ali. So the mother became so excited. And... The lady then kept quiet. Fatima kept quiet. So that was her consent. So Aqil went, uh, Huzam went back and told Aqil, she's accepted. You can have my daughter as a servant to Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, no. She will be a wife to Ali ibn Abi Talib. Aqil said, what would you like for a dowry, mahar? He said, she's a gift. You know, Ali, what dowry? He says, no, we will follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi of 500 silver coins, 500 dirham. So that's how we will do it. And then Aqil went and got her permission to perform the nikah. He gave the sermon of the nikah. Her father gave the sermon of the nikah and the nikah was recited. Aqil then said, I'm going to go back to Medina. And a few days later, we will send you all the gifts and so on and so forth so that she can come and join Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in Medina. From this conversation, you can tell about akhlaq of this noble lady. When she has such great akhlaq with her parents, then obviously a person who serves his parents who has great akhlaq with their parents, has tawfiq in dunya and in akhirah. This is a rule, by the way. Even for people who are not Muslims, when they actually look after their parents, then they will get tawfiq in dunya. They will have some success in dunya. Okay. One of the rules for tawfiq, which means to have a successful life in dunya and in akhirah, if you're a mu'min, is serving your parents, pleasing your parents. That's the A for the akhlaq of this lady. What is the I? The I is her interest. Interest in doing good. 
jumping at the opportunities. She comes to the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam. On the first day, a bride arrives there. Imam Ali calls her, Ya Fatima. She says, Ya Amir al Mu'mineen, do not call me Fatima anymore. Why not? This is your name. I am afraid whenever Hassan and Hussein, my masters, Sayyidi, Sayyidi Abu Muhammad, and Sayyidi Abu Abdullah, and Sayyidati Zainab, my masters, and Sayyidati Umm Kulthum, when they ever hear the, my name, Fatima, it reminds them of the name of their mother, Fatima. And that might bring grief to their hearts. I don't want to be a source of grief to them. So don't call me Fatima anymore. He said, okay. Allah will grant me four boys from you. So I'm going to call you Ummul Banin, the mother of the boys. That's, that's your title. And that was the title given to her since then. Salamullahi alayha. Okay. When the family wanted to grow, Abu al-Fadl salam was born. She would speak to him, tell him, Ya Abbas, you're my son. Hassan and Hussein and Zainab and Umm Kulthum are the, the children of who? Fatima al Zahra alayha salam. You're not equal. They are your masters. And that's how you need to address them. Her interest in doing khair, subhanAllah. So that's why Abu al Fadl never called his brothers brothers. Akhi. He would always call Sayyidi to Imam al Hassan. He would say, Sayyidi Abu Muhammad. Not even Sayyidi Ya Hassan. He calls him by his title, which is more respectful. Okay. Imam al Hussein, Sayyidi Aba Abdullah. That's how he would treat them. Interest at doing her. The family wanted to leave Mag Medina, go to Mecca. She would call her son. Make sure you look after Abi Fadl al uh, Abba Imam Hussein and Zainab alayhim as -salam. Look after them. Interest to do khair. Always. Whenever you see an opportunity to do khair, jump at it. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, al fursatu wal fursatu tamurru marra sahab fantahizu furas al khair. He says, opportunities come like a cloud. In other words, really quickly. A cloud just comes and goes really quickly. So seize the good opportunities. When you come to a good opportunity, jump at it. There is a, an opportunity to serve tea at the mosque, do it. Clean the mosque, do it. One of the ulama, what he used to do, whenever he goes, you know the shoes, some people just don't do their shoes, uh, you know, they don't put them on the racks or something. Especially when you have a big center, sometimes, you know, there is no room, whatever, so people just throw their shoes. This alim, what he would do is he would get up, go out and put the shoes, organize them, without telling anybody. One day a person wanted to go out, he saw him, he noticed. He said, what are you doing? He told him, shh, that's it. Don't say a word. This was something he used to do, you know, alim, and he was actually a big scholar, not just a lecturer, for example. Or, no, no, alim, he was a big alim. That was one thing he used to do to serve, opportunity to serve, and also a way for him to discipline himself as well. But this is what I used to do. One of the ulama, he told me this personally. MashaAllah, Allah has given him a lot of tawfiq. He's also alim. He's a mujtahid. One of the mujtahideen today. He says, I used to take the shoes of my father and put it in front of him every single time. You know, I would go with my father to the mosque, to the house, wherever we are. When he wants to leave, I would take his shoes and keep them in front of him. Okay. This is one of the reasons for the tawfiq of this. He became, MashaAllah, mujtahid. A big mujtahid. One of the big popular names today. He's not a marja'u taqlid but a very well-known mujtahid, alim. That's tawfiq. That's the initiative, the interest in doing khair. And finally, the L for love. She loved Allah. She loved Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam She had a special love to Ahlul Bayt, special. Harmala, oh sorry, Bishr ibn Hadlam. Not Harmala, Bishr ibn Hadlam. He was a poet. 
When Imam al-Sajjad was coming back to Medina from Karbala, after the battle, after the journey, everything, Imam al-Sajjad camped outside Medina for three days. He wanted the city of Medina to start mourning Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and that's how he wanted to enter the city of Medina in the state of Aza, mourning, grief. So when they arrived at the outskirts of Medina, he met this man by the name of Bishr, Bishr ibn Hadlim. He told him, Bishr, your father used to be a good poet, he used to recite poetry. Do you also know how to recite poetry? He said, yes, I do. He said, then go and use your poetry to inform people that my father, Imam al Hussein has been killed in Karbala. Deliver the news. Interestingly, the family of Imam al Hussein went back to Medina. They arrived around, around the 28th of Safar, approximately. The Shahada of the Prophet ﷺ, approximately that time. Imam al-Hussein got killed when? On the 10th of Muharram. Until the 28th of Safar, the people of Medina, the news has not yet reached the people of Medina. That Imam al-Hussein was killed, alayhi salam. People of Medina were not aware yet of his martyrdom. That tells you how much there was media control by the Umayyads and how much fear there was. From, from them, that people got scared to even run, somebody on a horse runs and tells the people of Medina that you know, Imam Hussein got killed. People of Sham were unaware. You know, when the family got into Sham, they thought these were strangers, outsiders. So people in Sham were not, except a few individuals here and there. Otherwise, the city was not aware. And that also tells you that the martyrdom, the killing of Imam al Hussein, was done in a manner with a lot of media control. It was done quietly, quickly, swiftly. They gathered the forces and they killed him, Salamullahi Alaihi. Such that there were other Shia who tried to reach Karbala, but they came too late by the time they heard the news. Nonetheless, Imam al Sajjad camps outside and he tells. Bishr, go and say the news. Bishr ibn Hadlam, then he says, I ran back to Medina. And I start going into every house. By every house, every street. And I would recite the following verse of poetry. Ya Ahle Yathrib. Yathrib is the old name of Medina. Ya Ahle Yathrib, la muqama lakum biha. You don't have a place to stay in it anymore. Oh, people of Yathrib, in other words, people of Yathrib, get out. Khalas. Why are you staying in this city anymore? Okay. Ya ahla Yathrib, la muqama lakum biha. People started coming out of their houses. Bishop, what's the matter? What's going on? Okay. Poetry, delivering poetry, was the format for telling news back in those days. Major news would be delivered sometimes in the form of poetry. So people realize there's some important news coming out. What is happening, Bishr? What's going on? He says, the news will be delivered at the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So everybody gathered there. The whole family. Everybody. He says, I did not leave a single house. Everywhere. I went. Ya ahla yathrib ala muqama lakum biha. By the time I reached the Prophet's graves, sallallahu alayhi wa the whole city of Medina has gathered. People are interested, curious. What's going on? What is the news? And that's when he broke the news. Ya ahla yathrib la muqama lakum biha. Qutila al-Husayn. Fa'admu'i midraru. Al-jismu minhu bi karbala amudarrajun. Wal-ra'su minhu ala al-qanati yudaru. He says, Hussein has been killed in Karbala. He left us a few months ago. He's not coming back anymore. Khalas. Hussein has been killed in Karbala. So my tears will continue to flow. His body is covered in blood in Karbala. But where is his head? His head is on the spears. 
going from one place to another place, from one city to another city. That's how the people of Medina became aware. And people started crying, weeping. Bishr then says, I saw an elderly lady coming to me. And she was carrying a young child on her shoulder. I asked, who is she? They told me, Ya Bishr, be careful how you deliver the news. This is Ummul Banin Al Arba'a, the mother of Abbas. He says, she came to me. Look at the love of this lady, subhanAllah, that she had to Imam Al Hussein. She had four sons. Now, some of you who have children, you know how valuable children are. She had four of them who went with Imam Al Hussein. Bishop said when she came to me carrying the child, I asked, Who is this child? They told me, This is Al Fadl, the son of Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas. So her grandchild. She came to me, she did not ask me about any of her own children. Her first question was, Ya Bishr, Akhbirni an waladi al Hussein. Tell me about my son, Abi Abdullah. Him, I want to know. What news do you have of him? He says, I didn't know how to break the news to her. What should I? Where do, where do you begin with this lady? How do you say it? He says, so I thought, okay, let me tell her, Ya Umm al -Banin, your youngest child, Uthman was killed in Karbala. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, I named my son Uthman because of my love to Uthman ibn Mad'oon, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi who got killed in the battle one day with the Prophet. A great companion. Imam Ali says, I loved him. So I named my son after him, Uthman ibn Mad'oon. Allah ta'ala alayhi. He was a great companion. He was a shaheed. Your son Uthman has been killed in Karbala. She looked at me and she said, Ya Bishr, I did not ask you about my son Uthman. Tell me about Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Is he back? So then I told her, Ya Umm al Bani, your second son Ja'far also got killed in Karbala. She said, Ya Bishr, I'm not asking you about Ja'far. Tell me about Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Is he back? I told her, Ya Umm al -Banin, your third son Abdullah is also killed in Karbala. She said, Bishr, tell me what about my son Abi Abdullah al Hussein? Then I told her, Ya Umm al -Banin, Allah lak al -ajr al -Fadl al -Abbas. Even Abbas was killed in Karbala. At that point, I saw her dropping the child of her shoulders. She broke into tears and looked at me and said, Ya Bishr, you've cut my heart into pieces. Tell me, may all my children be sacrificed for Abi Abdullah. Did he come back safe? Then I told her, Ya Umm al -Banin, even Hussein was killed in Karbala, Ya Umm al -Bani. At that point she cried, Aywa Imama, Aywa Husayna, Aywa Shahida. Ah, then Zainab alayhi salam returned back to Medina. Everyone in Medina is crying, is weeping. She goes back to her house as she enters the house. She looks around. The house is so vacant. This is where Imam al Hussein used to pray. This is his mahrab. This is where the oh, Al Qasim used to stay. This is where Ali al Akbar would. This is his room. That's where Abu al Fadl al Abbas used to speak to her. And this is the cradle of Abdullah Ali al Azgar. All empty. Everything is gone. Everyone is gone. She started crying and weeping. She told her family, women and children, lock the doors. Do not allow anyone to enter. We are in the state of grief and Aza. At that moment, they hear a knock on the door. 
one of her maids opens the door she runs back she says Maulati ya Zainab Ummul Baneen is at the door shall I allow her to enter she said yes of course she is of us she is our partner in the grief and the Aza so then the maid allows her to enter as she enters the minute Ummul Baneen sees Zainab salamullahi alayha she cries Aywa walada Aywa Husayna Zainab replies back Aywa Akha Aywa Abbas Ummul Baneen comes to her tells her Zainab I told my son Abu Al-Fadl Al-Abbas to take care of you to take care of Abi Abdullah to take care of the women and the children how is it that I hear that you became a prisoner for Bani Umay did my son have any shortcomings she cried she said no ya Umm al -Baneen. if they did not cut off his right hand if he had not lost his left hand if it weren't for the arrow that shot him in the eye and the pillar that they hit him with on his head as he fell down ya Umm al -Baneen, he fulfilled his brother's wish and he cried Akhi Hussein Adrikni brother Hussein come to my rescue you. If that had not happened to him, I would not have become a prisoner for Bani Umayya, Ya Umm al -Baneen. Then she used to go to the cemetery of Baqiyah. She made four graves representing those of her four sons and one fifth one representing that of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. She would sit there and she would recite these verses of poetry that we read at the beginning. La tad'uwanni wayki umm al-baneen Tudhakkirini biliyuth al-areen Do not call me umm al-baneen anymore You remind me of my heroes I had four sons that were so brave But now I have no more anymore They were so great But they were cut into pieces Sacrificing their sons for, for their lives for their master and is it true the news I heard that Abbas lost his right hand? Ya layta shi'riya kama akhbaru bi anna Abbasan qati'u liyameen inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon wa sayalamu alladhina zalamu ayya munqalabin yanqalibun wa al-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen raise your hands in the dua you are inshallah here in the majlis of this great lady this is a great gate of hajat and many of us all of us have hajat and many mu'mineen have requested us to remember them in our duas and our biggest haja inshallah may Allah grant us her ziyara in dunya and shafa'a inshallah in dunya in the qabr and in the akhirah inshallah May Allah make us among the Shia, insha'Allah. Everybody together. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amman yujibu al-mudhtar idha da'ahu wa yakshifu al-su'u. 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 أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءُ اللهم اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اللهم اقض حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم اجعلنا وذريتنا إلى يوم الدين من شيعة أمير المؤمنين المتقين ومن خدمة الحسين المخلصين رب اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا رب اجعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج 
واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين لقضاء الحوائج وشفاء المرضى وكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان أن فرد أرواح of all مرحومين مؤمنين المؤمنات أور مرحومين يور مرحومين and all the شهداء and the علماء as well as for the روح of مرحوم محمد بانجو جسا and حج حسن علي باي جعفر رحمة الله عليه as well as all أور مرحومين and for the روح of أم البنين سلام الله عليها رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة مع الصلاة